Hello everybody. I'm a little bit calmer to do this because this is a lot less stressful than trying to make um, altered playing cards. So um, I hope you get something from this. I've had lots of questions about how I make my paper, how I, um, what I do. So I'm going to show you. This is, um, I've just taken this out of a journal that I'm working on now for my Arty Maze design team project. So for this particular one, I printed the page from the kit onto uh, tracing paper. If you want to use a decent quality tracing paper like I do, my printer actually pulls this through the printer on its own and it's an inkjet printer. So I have watched tutorials, not on some of the things I do, I've not seen anyone do what I've done recently, um, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been done. All I'm saying is I haven't got the idea from anybody in particular. Um, the sewing onto tracing paper um, and sewing things in between tracing paper that I have used quite a bit. I always reference Jibbed Neary, she's absolutely amazing and I do get I did get that idea from her. And also she sews lines onto tracing paper which is amazing, but I just thought I'd start to print pages onto tracing paper. So it doesn't have to just be a laser printer, you can use inkjet printer. What I would say is the first thing is once it comes out of the printer, move it immediately, very careful, carefully, to a flat surface. Pop it onto a flat surface because it, one, it will curl and two, the ink will stay wet for quite a long time. You can reduce the saturation of the colours if you do not want um, quite an intense vellum. I don't do that on all of them and I get an effect a little bit more like the Tim Holtz Wallflower Vellum, which I love. So I don't always do that. This particular page in this journal, I did because I wanted you to be able to write on the paper and it be seen from the, outside, from the other side. So it's backwards. I really love that. I've done that, it looks great. Um, so you would see it on the other side anyway, but I've, I've reduced the opacity of this particular page. So that's one thing you can do. Now when you pop it through your printer, if it is um, a very thin, just grab it, sorry. If it is a really thin tracing paper, what I would do is I would take your tracing paper and a sheet of simple copier paper. I would line up double-sided tape. I don't have it to hand, I don't know where it's gone. But I would line up double-sided tape along the very edge but not hanging over. If it hangs over it will mess up your printer. And then really, really carefully line that up to the, pe to the tape. This is if you're using a much thinner um, tracing paper. Then you would need that edge to be what pulls through your printer. I hope that makes sense. Um, obviously the tracing paper on the top because it will print on the top. If you don't do that, your printer will struggle to pull through the tracing paper and it will get all, you'll get a block, it will all screw up. So really, really carefully you need to line up those edges with that double sided tape or a really, really fine line of prick stick and then it will pull through your printer. But you still need to do the same thing, put it aside, leave it on a flat surface for quite a long time and the ink will dry. I tend to do it in the evening, so when I get up the next day ready to journal, it's, it's dry. So once I'd sort of started to use tracing paper, um, I wanted to make some patterns, so the first thing I did was scan a napkin. So I scanned a napkin, um, this was sent to me, oh, it, I think I may have got this from the lovely Chantelle. Hi Chantelle. Um, if not, it may have come from Brit. So it's either Brit or it's from Chantelle. So I, I only, ha like I said, I don't get many napkins. So I scanned it because I wanted to keep it. I wanted that pattern. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I can actually print this onto tracing paper. And that would make a really nice vellum inside a traveler's notebook. Or, or any uh, any journal. Um, then I was making um, the book f um, for the swap. 
and I had some really beautiful vintage doilies. This one was actually made from a really sheer fabric. So I scanned that and then printed that onto um, the tracing paper. You may have seen it in my previous video. Actually, no, my previous video would be my tutorial. So it would be two previous videos ago. That didn't make any sense, I'm really sorry. I told you I'm pants at things like this, I really apologise. But anyway, um, this is beautiful. I absolutely love it. I really do. Uh, when I was at uni, um, I did play around a lot with um, printing onto different types of paper and tracing paper was one of them. So this is not an idea um, I've literally just come up with. This is something I've been playing with for, for, for years, years and years. Um, and often on my, my photographs, um, I would um, paint onto them, stick things onto them, um, print them onto tracing paper and then lay the tracing paper over another image. Uh, so, you know, that I think is, is awesome. Um, and like I said, I'm working on a nature themed journal at the moment, which I wanted to be actually a really nice hardcover journal because I haven't really made very many of them, although the Artie Mays book I'm making now is a hardcover journal. Um, so, I was trying to think of ways that I could use tracing paper that I haven't seen anybody else do and obviously I've started doing this um, printing onto tracing paper and scanning items so I went out for a really nice walk and collected some bits and pieces to press and they are pressing at the moment but I was thinking you know I can't use these for six weeks or so how can I get these images into my journal so I thought I know exactly what I'm doing I'm going to scan them and I'm going to print them onto tracing paper now if you have a really top of the range scanner, you probably don't want to do this because it did make a little bit of a mess. Um, the first thing I tried was some grasses, which I love. Um, I popped them onto the scanner bed, scanned them. The scanner obviously didn't shut properly, so you get this kind of grey effect in the background. Um, but I think that looks brilliant. I really loved it. And then I just kept going. I kept scanning all sorts of things, making more of a more of a mess of my printer. So I scanned some flowers. This is one that probably could have done with being reduced the saturation, but I like it. I really do. Had a bit of a wrinkle in this, but so I've scanned that one too. And I tried it out with some flowers. Um, I've also done some violas and some pansies and various other flowers from my garden since I did these but these were wild flowers and I just took the heads basically and this the little white one here is the same as the one on there so I just wanted to say if you have a scanner that you're not worried about getting absolutely filthy then this is a great idea uh, obviously scanning things like your doilies and your napkins is not going to cause oh they actually look really good over the top don't they i actually might might sew some of those together yeah. so that's my idea for handmade vellum i hope it's been helpful um like i said i've had several questions about how do you put it through the printer and does an inkjet printer work and and that kind of thing so i just thought i'd do a, a one sweeping little how i do it and i hope you found it interesting and thank you very much for keep supporting my channel and watching. And I was absolutely blown away by the lovely comments I got from my last tutorial. So thank you for that. And hopefully they'll get a bit easier. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.